Hi students, welcome to HSC Biology and Module 7, Infectious Disease. This is video number 2 and we're going to talk a little bit about epidemics. So we've got these massively long um, learning intentions where we need to describe a variety of infectious diseases caused by pathogens, including micro and macroorganisms and non-cellular pathogens, and collect primary and secondary source data relating to disease transmission, including the transmission of a disease during an epidemic. So in this video, we want to focus on epidemics. So the first thing that you should be able to do is to provide a definition of the term epidemic, and I guess we're going to contrast that with a pandemic that uh, we all know a fair bit about. You should also be able to discuss general causes behind outbreaks of infectious disease and particular diseases in terms of transmission during an epidemic. So let's have a look at some things in a little more detail. So it's hard to talk about infectious diseases and not mention COVID. It's been one of the things that's dominated, the headlines dominated our lives for the last oh, 14 or so months. And it's something that we're very much aware of. We know that it's an infectious disease. We know that it's caused by a virus. But why is it a pandemic? Well, I think one of the things that's important for us to do is to try and draw this distinction between what a pandemic and what an epidemic is. And obviously, uh, the coronavirus, which has caused COVID-19, is uh, regarded as a pathogen that has become or has caused, led to a pandemic, which is a worldwide spread of a new disease. Now, this is probably a little bit easier uh, in the 21st century than it was uh, in previous centuries, simply because it's so much easier for us to travel these days. Uh, with the um, world being such a small place and people jumping on planes and boats all the time, there's been a huge movement of people around the planet. And as a consequence of that, these sorts of infections that are able to move from one person to another fairly readily um, have got a much better better chance of being able to spread very widely, very quickly. Now, we get a sense of, um, I guess, the difference between a pandemic and an epidemic if we start to think about the geography associated with these two terms. The CDC, which is the Center for Disease Control in the United States, they define an epidemic as an unexpected increase in the number of disease cases in a specific geographic area. So realistically, we have to have an epidemic before we can have a pandemic. So we already have places where the disease is a little bit unexpected. We didn't, uh, and obviously if uh, its incidence is zero, we don't know about it, it's a new disease, um, then that's very unexpected. And if that then starts to escalate the number of cases, uh, particularly in a short period of time, then that is uh, obviously something that would start to move into the epidemic range for us. If COVID hadn't been so global, we could regard a couple of cases that we've had, those couple of outbreaks that we had uh, in New South Wales and the Northern Beaches and the Barella Cluster, um, the outbreaks that have occurred in Melbourne, these could each have been regarded as epidemics in their local regions. But because we know this is caused by a particular virus that is found now worldwide, and obviously in Australia, our numbers have been really, really good. Uh, we haven't had massive outbreaks. We've contained it. We've um, taken a lot of steps to try and protect ourselves, our population, our, our older population and our young people from um, exposure to this particular virus. And we've done that very quickly and we've responded very fast. And as a result of that, the number of cases, while we've had a couple of little spikes uh, over the past 12 months, they haven't um, really taken off in this country the way they have in many other places around the world. So here's the, the distinction between an epidemic and a pandemic. Pandemic is global, epidemic is local. Now, epidemics are caused by infectious agents. So we've already said that what we have is a local case of an infectious agent which starts to become more prevalent. So this word prevalence is important. It's, it's increasing its incidence. It's unexpected. It's not something that we've planned for or something that we feel is going to happen. It's just suddenly taken over in the population and we're, we're not quite sure how to deal with it. 
The infectious agent spreads through an area where it wasn't originally present. So um, this is kind of what's happened in a small scale with something like corona is it's got into an area. It started to spread through the population there. But of course, uh, because we talked about the fact that so many people are mobile, it's moved very quickly from one local area to another and become a global event. Infectious agents uh, start to cause symptoms in an area where it pre hasn't previously done so can also be a cause of an epidemic. So this can happen, for example, by a mutation. And it's the reason, for example, why uh, the flu virus can be a bit of a problem for us every year, because um, whilst it does cause symptoms, when we start to feel like we've got this flu under control, there's a mutation and it starts to cause symptoms again. Now, anywhere where we, we have maybe um, another type of um, pathogen that at the moment isn't causing a disease, and then again through mutation, perhaps it starts to produce some symptoms uh, in its hosts, then again, that could be a, a cause of an epidemic. So three different uh, types of causes, infectious agents becoming more widespread, uh, spreading through an area where they weren't previously found, and or something which was found in a place um, and has now started to cause symptoms where previously it didn't. So when we start to analyse different types of disease, um, epidemics may be a result of one or a combination of these different causes. One interesting example is the Ebola epidemic. And you can see some of the figures here from 2014, 2015, that once these cases start to, to rise, they rose very quickly. One of the things that we know about Ebola is it's very virulent, passes quickly from one host to another, and it causes symptoms fairly quickly as well. And also, um, we need to consider the severity of the symptoms. And obviously Ebola was a, a, an extremely serious virus, one that, one that uh, more often than not resulted in the death of its host. So this was a really bad um, pathogen. This was a real problem epidemic and the numbers escalated very, very quickly. The, the, the actual virulence can sometimes work in our favour uh, in terms of the fact that if we can contain it, um, then the fact that it acts so fast on people limits their ability to move and transmit uh, the pathogen from one host to another and certainly from one region to another. And this is a, an interesting little case study on um, why don't all epidemics in the 21st century become pandemics? Why didn't this one develop into a pandemic? And so these are some of the questions that we want to ask ourselves as we're studying uh, diseases and not just uh, infectious diseases, but diseases in general. We want to ask what is it that um, limits some types of diseases to localised regions and others um, to become globally widespread. So what's the sort of thing that could cause an outbreak like Ebola? Well, there's a couple of uh, interesting things that we can look at in terms of what we think might have contributed to outbreaks like Ebola. The first is a change in the ecology of the host population. Okay, so if that's that could have something to do with um, our diet, um, it could have something to do with travel. Uh, or the way that we're interacting with others. So anything about the ecology, remember the ecology is how we interact with our environment. And if there's some change in what we're eating or where we're going, our migration patterns, those can have an impact on um, the particular outbreak of a uh, certain disease. Genetic change in the parasite population. So we talked about something like mutation as being a good example of something that starts to set something off in a direction where it may not have uh, been moving before. So that idea of genetic change is very, very important. Um, it's, it's more likely to be a mutation in the case of a, a, a prokaryotic organism that only reproduces asexually. Maybe there can be some ecological reasons um, if there are sexual cycles, for example, in the parasite life cycle and some changes that are occurring or some increases in variation that maybe can contribute further to genetic change. Introduction of a new parasite to a host population, and this is, this is potentially what happened with COVID. 
uh, is that it may have been a zoonose, which is the movement of a particular virus from an animal population into a human population. And that could have been through, um, again, diet. So this can link back to the sorts of things that we're eating and maybe uh, contaminated individuals are what has uh, moved this into the human population. Uh, but it may simply be, uh, certainly was the case for some of the um, indigenous populations around the world once the uh, lands were settled by um, some of the colonizers, they brought parasites into host populations that had never been there before. And we know that that's the case for the Australian uh, First Nations people uh, who were exposed to parasites that were brought in by the Europeans when they first arrived. And because there had been no previous exposure to those sorts of parasites, there was no natural immunity amongst the First Nation population. And so as a result, that can uh, create uh, significant outbreaks uh, within the native population. Uh, and host immunity uh, can also be a factor. Um, there's, a, there's a little concept known as endemic equilibrium, where basically there's a um, ideal relationship between hosts and parasites in terms of population numbers. And if that changes uh, for whatever reason, and immunity is something that we'll look at later on in this module, but certainly something that can contribute to how resistant a host is to the pathogen, how quickly its body responds to uh, an invasion by a pathogen, uh, or minimizing the system, the symptoms, anything like that. Um, perhaps even the methods of transmission. So if we can, uh, if we exceed the transmission threshold, if there's ways where we're actually able to transmit that pathogen more easily um, from host to host, that can also lead to outbreaks like Ebola. So there's a number of different reasons why uh, epidemics may arise uh, and also uh, a fine line too, I guess, in the 21st century between where an epidemic ends and a pandemic begins. Thanks for watching.